so obviously it's the it's the tournaments where you decide not to really vlog that uh that you run super hot. As you will have seen from some previous videos, my summer tournament extravaganza did not go according to plan in the early days. I did have a sort of okay run maybe back in May or possibly early April over at the win, final tabling, but ICM punting it off from chip lead to out in seventh place. Following that, I had pretty much infinite bullets into these 500 through 2k buy-ins at the Venetian and the win. Most of the things I played were two-day events, but on a whim, I decided to play the Venetian $600 ultimate stack. And well, things went different. I was kind of treating this as a blow-off event heading in. I wasn't planning to vlog. I was just planning to do some Instagram stories if I ran well, but even then, I was like, I'm not gonna take this that seriously. With content, I'm just gonna focus on playing and play I did. I definitely had my game face on coming in and I actually managed to spin up a stack pretty much right away with not too much going wrong. I won queens against ace king all in preflop in one of the early levels for a decent sized pot, keeping me well above 100 big blinds for a very long time considering the pretty fast structure in this one day event. I knew I was running hot because I was pretty much always the one collecting all the small chips for the color ups, but I digress. There were a few hands I was able to document either on Instagram stories or in my Discord. This one was pretty insane. There's a 5-way limped pot and I have 9-8 of diamonds on the button and decide to complete it. On a flop of Jack 7-5 rainbow, the first limper leads for 6k into the 19.5k pot and there are two calls. I decided to raise it up here just because there's effectively at least two players who are essentially dead money in this spot. However, after I make it 32.5k, the big point jams for 73k, it folds to me, and I make the call. He has 7-5 offsuit, so even though we were getting this great price and I was figuring even against a set I probably have to stick this in, we're actually in pretty okay shape here with a couple of backdoors that we didn't even expect to have. Turns out one of those backdoors come as the turn is an 8 and the river is a 9, and I end up with 410k on dinner break coming back to a 4k big blind. And if you've ever made dinner break in one of these things, having 100 bigs by that point is pretty darn good. After taking infinite more pictures of my stack and sending them to Instagram, I ended up with a guy on my left who thought he was much cooler than the rest of us and just wanted to construct something. Several jokes were made and all of them hit their mark when he alerted us that he was in fact a retired bricklayer. And no, he actually wasn't trolling us. This guy actually used to lay bricks for a living. Um, story checks out. So obviously it's the, it's the tournaments where you decide not to really vlog that, uh, that you run super hot. No complaints, obviously, but yeah, the hands are gonna be pretty sparse in this one. So hopefully, hopefully I can still take notes on some as we, uh, as we wrap up the night, but it's late. Hands are gonna be coming out as fast, shorthand, and then final table, obviously I gotta focus. So yeah, I'll do my best. Um, I'll put what I can in stories as well. And then, yeah, hope to see you at the end. As I continued to stack chips as wide and as tall as the floor would let me, I just continued to run hotter than the sun. Getting down toward the final two tables, I started to develop a pretty massive chip lead over everybody else involved, but I finally cooled off a little bit, starting to get into contention with a couple of other players for who was going to maybe be the chip leader heading into the final table. We did finally head into the final table with the chip lead, and we played an interesting one very quickly. Under the Gun found a jam for I'm guessing something like 15 big blinds, and middle position just called off of something like 30 to 40 big blinds. It folded around to me in the big blind and I looked down at red pocket jacks. This is actually not as comfortable of a spot to be in as you'd expect. Good players will have slow plays in middle position spot, and Under the Gun was short enough that I would expect them to jam quite a few hands that beat me, uh, and not a whole lot of hands that are tons worse. However, he was going to hit the big blind soon, and I figured that I was ahead enough of the time. I found the rejam, and middle position had aces. The only good news here was that I cover everyone, so I was expecting to have to jump back into this with something like 30 to 40 big blinds myself, and far from the chip lead. However, the board had other plans. It comes out jack high on the flop with not a whole lot going on for anybody. There weren't any backdoor flush draws, no backdoor straight draws except for Broadway runner runner for the player who actually had less in chips. The turn was an offsuit, nine pretty much sealing their fate. The only card that could come was the last ace in the deck. It did not come. And we scooped a massive pot 
and two eliminations to get an overwhelming chip lead on this final table, seven-handed. From this point on, I actually basically didn't win another hand. We just kind of tangled with the player on our left a little bit, who I later learned is a pro named Austin and was a pretty cool guy. He was making life difficult for me, but it was also just a card distribution thing. And as we eliminated a couple more players, I was starting to get close to him in chips, even though I still had the chip lead. As we got down to four-handed, talks of chops immediately began. I let them know right away that I wasn't necessarily super interested in talking about chops. I figured I was pretty excited to play this out, and even though we had something like 27k locked up and 73k to play for, I didn't mind playing for it. I'd been in big spots before, even somewhat recently, and so I was feeling pretty good about this. Plus, from a negotiating standpoint, it's good to appear indifferent to the chop because you're more likely to be able to get a better deal later. One guy was spearheading the conversation, and I figured that I could kind of put it on him to make sure I got something good out of it. Each of us was guaranteed 40k to 52k in payouts based on ICM, and I just told him straight up, guys, I'm gonna need above that. If you guys wanna pay me 6k above ICM, I'm good to go. If not, we can play this out. 6k though, you guys figure it out amongst yourselves, I'm gonna hit the restroom and walk around. And that's what I did. I just got up from the table and literally let them talk it out. It's the kind of power move that I don't think I would have been confident making in many contexts, but all these guys were younger than me and seemed to care about the money at stake more than I would, so it seemed like the right play at the time. A little bit nerve wracking, but very cool to execute and come back and see that they wanted to make it happen. All in all, the guy who seemed most interested in making the chop happen ended up paying most of it, the 2.5k out of the six, one guy paid two and another paid 1.5. They were able to secure the chop through the official payouts themselves. So my hidden mob is accurate, showing a payout of $57,758. The nice thing about having the chip lead at the time is that I also managed to secure the winner's photo and a nice little silver coin commemorating the event. It's my first technical win in a live tournament that could make it to Hendon. This event was really special to me and meant a lot more coming on the heels of the whole Ignition debacle. And I'll let past Matt do the rest of the talking here. Well, I know I obviously did a terrible job vlogging today, but can you blame me? Some of the run good spots in this tournament were just like unfathomable, but I, it really actually harkened back to playing the Ignition uh, Millie because it really just showed how there's some moments where you feel like you can't even describe how good you've run. And the fact that it happens feels impossible. But without those moments that feel impossible, you just really don't win the tournament for the most part in these large fields. So, I mean, obviously it wasn't a natural win. That would have been the icing on the cake, but to get into this spot, to feel very good about my negotiating, to feel very good about the fact that I was willing to play it out regardless, and to have them just say okay uh, to what I asked for and to get what I think is a pretty favorable chop deal for me. Uh, it feels great. And obviously getting the winner photo, getting the official first place it still feels good even though I didn't play it out. I know a lot of you will probably be disappointed that I didn't, uh, that I didn't play it out, but the reality is we had 24K locked up, 73K up top, and I locked myself an X, you know, a total of 33K above what we locked up. And to do that variance free in a format that is so variance heavy. And, you know, I, I think I deserved above ICM, but I probably did get a good deal. All those things add up to, I'm pretty, I'm pretty damn pleased. So um, there was something with the system, I have to go back in the morning to actually get the payout. But uh, tonight I need to go pass out and uh, figure out how to break the news to Mickey this time. She's gonna be excited about all these, all these new tacos, <laughs> all these new tacos that she gets to eat. Driving home felt super surreal, especially given that I didn't even have the payout in hand. I went back the next day after walking my dog and just hanging out a bit to get the actual money 
you know, just pure check form. So nothing all that exciting. I don't really take a bunch of cash when I get big tournament wins, unless I happen to be really short on cash at home anyway. So this was a nice one to just stick in the bank account and feel good about. I do wanna be clear though that $57,000, while it might seem really big and is super nice to hit, doesn't really change my life that much. This is the kind of score that helps me enter the next round of tournaments, but doesn't ultimately change my lifestyle. However, it definitely set me up with a lot of confidence heading into WSOP, and that's something I'd love to start sharing with you soon.